Hey everyone, my name is Simsy. How you all doing? Welcome back to some more AFL 23. Here today on the channel, we have Season 2, Episode 1 of my Brisbane Lions Management Career Series. Here today, we've got the transfer window, we've got the draft, and we've also got the Brownlow. So first things first, Sonzi from the Richmond Tigers won the Brownlow by a point ahead of Ollie Wines. Danaher won the Com with 38, and Sonzi, respectively, won the Rising Star. We also have the All-Australian team here, where Cameron, Neil, and... And Andrews made it, along with Cripps, Petrarca, Oliver. We've got uh, Moore, Tom Stewart as well, Rioli. So a pretty solid lineup. And we're going to be hitting the free agency period now. So looking at the team, obviously last year we won the grand final and the minor premiership. We've got a lot of players which will be retiring over the next two years. I'll go into them. And there's a lot of players that won't sign new contracts as well. So I think we need to strengthen in our forward line, our midfield, and our defense. And I've made the decision to negotiate with the Gold Coast Suns to get the services of Ben King, the 22-year-old full forward. And McDonald and Cockatoo will go the other way. I'm also wanting to bring in another midfielder as well. And I think Jai Simpkin would be a... Perfect addition to our midfield, helping out McCluggage and Neil. And I think it's realistic to go after a player like Simkin. He's probably going to be moving from North Melbourne over the next couple of years. And Archie, McKenna and Matheson are going to be going the other way. All players that we haven't really used. And it's going to be a hard bargain to get a player 90 rated on our list, which I think is a really nice addition. Defender-wise, we're going to be negotiating with the Hawthorne Hawks, and we're going to get the services of James Sicily with Adams and Joyce going the other way. I think this is another realistic and sensible transfer, as Sam Mitchell is currently trying to drag down the average age of the Hawthorne squad, and Sicily is going to be probably only playing football for three, four years in this career series. So we've managed to pick up players from Gold Coast, North Melbourne, and Hawthorne. So the free agency period has now ended, and I think those are really solid additions to the team. We've got the national draft as well. Let's have a look. Now, obviously, we finished in first. We're not going to get a good pick. We're all the way down here in 20th. And Estes looks the best player for us, so we'll pick him at pick 20, Daniel Estes, a defender. We also get another pick here in the late 40s. So Panza. It's actually 54 to be exact. And I guess we'll go with Odom for pick 64. Here is Ben King in the Brisbane Lion kit coming over from the Suns. And Simkin helping us out in midfield. And there is James Sicily as well. All fantastic additions to the squad. And here are the players that went the other way. Archie wouldn't sign a new contract. Matheson, definitely want to move him on. His overall rating and age is something I'm not interested in. <laughs> it's just not good enough. He's just going to go down in stats. McKenna, we didn't really even play too much as well. But he's going to be playing for North Melbourne this season. McDonald, we picked up in the mid-season draft for free, the former Melbourne man. And we allowed him to go the other way. But I do think it's realistic and sensible picking up from teams lower down the list. I feel like the transition from playing at Gold Coast in Queensland compared to Brisbane is uh, an easy pick. Uh, Adams obviously retired in real life uh, after his concussion, so uh, we've moved him on there. We, we still had him on the list. They probably should take him off uh, realistically. Uh, unfortunately, Pryor and Joyce wouldn't sign new contracts, so they wanted to leave anyway. So it's interesting that transfers can actually really force their way out of football clubs in AFL 23. And here are the contracts as well. Uh, it's probably not a bad idea to go through and have a look. Lions, Rich, Lester, McCarthy, Zorko, and Danaher probably only have a season or two left in them. And here are the other transfers as well around. Uh, Silvani joined Frio. Brad Close joined West Coast, which is weird. Uh, Neil Bullen joined the Saints. Fantasia to Carlton. Tom Papley to the Sydney Swans. Jackson has left Frio to join Essendon. He's now back in Melbourne. Didn't like the West Coast. McGrath has joined North. Sam DeConning has joined Adelaide. That looks weird. 
And then, yeah, so we're going to have to go and negotiate some contracts. So, McCluggage, we'll give him a five-year. I really don't want to give a player a contract until he's, like, over. Like, if I think players start to really go down in stats in this game when they're, like, 31, 32, and you want to try and move them on. So, we're going to negotiate with Ashcroft, try and get him on a nine-year deal that has gone through. We're going to try and get Cam Rayner on a seven-year deal. Uh, Coleman, been really impressed with his season. He can have a seven-year contract. And we'll give Charlie Cameron another two more years. We don't want to give anyone a contract if they hit the age of 31, 32. We want to try and move them on. We probably, probably shouldn't even give Zorko a contract this year. We probably should look to move him on. Uh, Andrews, we'll give him a five-year deal. We're going to give Bailey an eight-year deal. We're going to give Stasevich a seven-year deal. Moving on now to Ainsworth, he can get a seven-year deal as well. We want to try and lock down those Premiership veterans. And we'll give McInerney a two-year. And I've also gone through and uh, negotiated with some of the other players as well. So overall, everyone here has a contract to nearly 2029. Unfortunately, Lerman won't sign a new deal. So we're probably going to have to look to move him on next season. So any player here that um, has a 24 release contract date, they're either too old that I want to move on or potentially they won't sign deals. So you can see here, Lerman won't sign a deal. Uh, Rich is older. We're going to probably try and move him on next year. He's probably got, this is probably Rich's last season, which is a shame. Same with Lions, Lester McCarthy and Zorko. I think we'll give Danaher another year and depending on Jack Gunston's rating as well, he's currently 31. He's going to be uh, 32 this year as well. Um, but we will be needing to transition this team as... Basically, it's coming to that, uh, even in real life, they've probably only got a year or two maybe of the uh, Fagan regime slash dynasty. But here's the team. <laughs> um, I, I went on AFL Fantasy just to make it a little bit clearer. I do think they should have an update with even like player game faces because the team management really needs some work here. So this is the team that I want to be going with for the majority of this season. Ainsworth, Andrews, Coleman, Rich, Sicily, Starcevich in the back line. In the midfield, McCluggage, Simpson, Ashcroft, Lions, Berry, Neil, and Dunkley. In the rucks, we've still got Ford and McInerney. And we'll be playing Ben King at full forward with Gunston, uh, Cameron, Bailey, Danaher, and Rayner in that forward line. Like you transition from that to this, and you can see here it looks better. Also, they should have overall ratings here as well. They still haven't added a tactics section, so there's still a lot of work, especially into the trade period as well. But uh, here is the team. I think those new additions, I think signing Ben King is realistic and sensible. He's not the best of the Bing, big <laughs> King brothers, but obviously it wouldn't be much of a... Like, the thing is, he doesn't... If he's going to move... Like, I think it's kind of sensible that if Ben King was to leave Gold Coast, where would he go? He would probably go to Brisbane because he's up there in Queensland. He doesn't have to move his family. And I think he would slot into our forward line. I think they should make that signing in real life. I think he's a pretty underrated player. Simkin as well is probably going to leave North Melbourne at some point um, just because of the way they're going. And they're a smaller club like Gold Coast. Like, we're not going to Richmond. We're not signing, obviously, <laughs> um, like their best midfield. Uh, we're also not going to Melbourne as well. We're not signing Petrarca and, and Gorn and bringing them in. So I think signing Simkin is realistic. He's I wouldn't be surprised if he ends up at Melbourne. Speaking of Melbourne, we do beat them in the pre-season uh, simulation here, 33-24, before we get stuck into round one of this AFL 23 career series. And I think Sicily as well, he could very well move to the Lions because of the Hawthorne-Brisbane connection, but he's definitely going to be moved out within potentially this year or next year because obviously Hawthorne have an incredibly young list with Tom Mitchell leaving to... Collingwood, Amira, it's a Frio. Um, Sicily is probably going to be moved on at some point as well. Now, unfortunately, we've got some pretty bad news here. Ainsworth has picked up an injury. And due to that simulation, would you believe it? Will Ashcroft has ruptured his Achilles. So 
That means he is out for the entirety of season two of this career series. So luckily we brought in Simpkin because Ashcroft is now fully out. I was playing a lot of I was playing Ashcroft a lot last year, and now Simpkin is a perfect replacement. So the thing is, we've got players leaving, um, a lot of them, and we've also brought in three to replace those. So we probably could have done with maybe a couple more youngsters we might have picked up um, because our squad list is getting a little bit thin. However, we do have those draftees that uh, we might need to use this season as well. Rightio then. Well, let's move on to round one. We're going to be facing the Cats at the GMHBA Stadium. So unfortunately, Ainsworth is uh, now out as well. Same with Ashcroft. Ainsworth's only out for a week though, but how gutting is that? Will Ashcroft will not be making an appearance this season. So we're going to GMHBA Stadium for the first time to face the Cats. Always tough coming down here. Now as well, obviously the hardest difficulty has been reworked significantly. There's updates every single day. And I've personally found it incredibly challenging to spoil and mark these days. But here we go against the Cats. Let's get stuck into them. McInerney in the ruck, wins it, only as far as Chockey. He somehow gets it out with his new tattoo. Berry bangs it to the pocket to find Cameron. Spoiled. Crumbs to Berry. Trying to play it inside. Interesting handball. Charlie picks it up. Can't hit it home. Just get it out. <laughs> oh, wow. The AI is so, so aggressive now. Crikey. But the Lions take the lead. And good grab by the Cats. They spray it out to the wing. They're going forward now. Leicester having to come up. Interesting handball and tackle. The Cats go forward. They play on quickly. Andrews oh, can't win it there. They've definitely... Um, up to the rate of spoiling and marking ability from the AI as the cats bring one back there. Okay. I feel like I need to change the way I play with marking. You can't mark everything. You nearly should spoil about 70% of the time. Only like 25% go for the mark. But the major problem with the hardest difficulty that I've found at the moment is because there's no tactics in this game at the moment and def the defense is just so open like that it's basically who can outscore each other from what I've found second quarter now McCarthy on the mark facing his former side Payne now comes out and our defense was probably our weakest point last year as well like we've got a good defensive line but they're just not as highly rated as some of the other teams. And the Cats narrowly missed that one there. We do just look a little bit light in midfield, maybe. Oh, no, that's terrible by Sicily. What have I done? Sicily on debut at the back. Costs the Lions their third goal. And they lead by two down here at GMHBA Stadium. Back in the ruck we go. I do quite like that the stadium's finished and built. <laughs> it always looks a bit weird when they're on the telly. But no Brad Close. He now plays for West Coast. He actually looked good in that West Coast kit. What did you guys reckon? They got another one here. I believe this is Stengel lining up for another for number four. Kicks the goal. Four for the Cats. Interesting comeback after our first goal. And now it's half time. We need to switch on here. Third quarter, trying to get it out. Lions, can't get to it. Tom Papley on debut, <laughs> debut as well, which is just a little bit weird. Yeah, we're just getting outmarked consistently. Like, why are there two free players there? Come on. Why is no one man marking? Like, you can't even use that as a tactic, because that's what I'd definitely use. 
I only can control one player. So even if I go back as they go forward... Yeah, the positioning needs to be better. But it's alright, a little bit of adversity. I'm still slowly but surely learning and uh, trying to figure out the AI. But that's the biggest advice I'd give to someone is don't try and as mark as much as you did before. But I do think the AI's marking and spoiling ability needs to go down significantly. Dunkley wins it. But it's not unrealistic to go to GMHBA and potentially lose. The Cats have a wicked record down here. But every single day this game is getting patched and worked on, so I'm learning it. <laughs> but I found that I need to... Uh, I need to spoil more rather than go for the mark. And play on just like that, like Joe Danaher did, rather than going for the set shots back to back but the premiers are having a little bit of adversity here and there's some jeopardy back in this career save we won the premiership last year we won the minor premiership now my goal is to hope we try and make top eight ben king comes up gets spoiled good handball to mccarthy the former cat you forget that he started his career here not getting many games for the Cats, and now scores and celebrates unapologetically against his former side. Same with Darcy Ford as well. He was signed up for the Cats and was given a run. He's a, I actually don't mind him in Ruck. The thing is, McInerney rarely gets injured. He's a pretty decent second Ruck. Um, I don't think he'd be the main one when we look to move him on. Oh, yeah. oh wait, good interception, Starswitch. He played on too early. Berry. Sometimes the tackling as well. I feel like their handballs are way more accurate compared to me. And the way they get it out as well. Pain. Come on, boys. Ugh. Whoa, what was that? How was that play on? I don't know about that. But. Oh, interesting goal there by the Cats. 20 points. Still doable. But this has been a pretty interesting and scrappy game. As soon as you lose the midfield contest as well. It's basically GG's. Interesting ball in. Come on, Payne. Oh, couldn't get the spoil on target there. Also, it largely depends about your positioning as well. The amount of momentum as you run to the contest. To either mark or spoil. Oh, that's a pretty good shot there, to be honest. But the Cats kick seven. And the former Premiers look shell-shocked. Down in Geelong. Fourth quarter now. Can we show some resilience here? But the team that won the flag last year, they're one year older. They're a little bit slower. And also we are betting in a new full forward in Ben King. Sicily in the back line as well. Along with Simpkin in midfield. It's going to be Rich, Leicester's Lions, McCarthy and Zorko's last season as well potentially. The Cats handballing out to the wing. Good kick at the footy, but no one's marking anyone. There's just so much space. And they're going to go back and have a, another set shot here. Yeah, we just look a little bit light in midfield. I think our forward line's fine. We will need to replace those older players as Tom Hawkins, with an absolute bomb, drops it. That's number nine for the Cats. And they look so much better this season. Could they win the Premiership? McCluggage wins it. Trying to get it out. Bangs it to Gunston. Can we get a mark? We do get the mark in the end. And Gunston's going to go back and try and slot the Lions fourth. Eventually we're going to need a second ruck, but maybe we just need some more reinforcements because their interchange isn't the best. But that's number four. So they trail the lines it's going to be a point as the siren goes but the cats win 59 26 the lions lose their first match of the season i feel like we played all right our defense really let us down and the cats are going to claim the first win of the season against us 33 points 
contest. They tackled us way more. They got more inside 50s. But at least the AI is um, competitive. I just need to learn how to play with it. Stengel with four. Myers with three. Langdon with just the one. Danaher, Gunston, King, and McCarthy getting on the score sheets. But here we go. Round two. We have Q Clash as we go and face the Suns at the Heritage Bank Stadium. Going to rotate the team slightly. Leicester now can come back. And here we go. Q Clash. King facing his former side as well. A lot of good players, the Suns. Let's go. Dunkley on the mark. The Suns go forward. Rich going back with the flight of the ball. Completely misses the spoil. Inside to our D50, Sicily, the pack. It's been crunched, but it's a favorable fall ball only as far as the Suns player. And they start off the scoring. Incredibly disappointing here. That was just unlucky. Was it Anderson? Noah, maybe? He could be a potential good pickup in a couple of seasons. The Suns have a lot of players. I think, like, I think Lions, yeah, Lions used to play for the Suns, didn't he? I feel like them being the smallest club in Queensland, it'd be realistic for the Brisbane Lions to snatch up their talent. But they go back here and are showing some massive courage here. Ball up in the pocket. The Lions need to step up here. Berry to ground gets dropped. I also feel like the tackling near the AI. Like, I am scoring. I scored four goals against Geelong, which is pretty good. But maybe I need to get better quality defenders next year. I don't know. Sicily in now. Hmm. Maybe I need a couple big key forwards just so I can outmark them because... Although Sicily's 90 rated at perfect timing there, he's getting outmarked. And the Suns kick three in a row at the Heritage Bank Stadium. And the Lions, after winning the Premiership last year, have they fallen off? Are they cooked? Man, <laughs> I want to play the entirety of this season on the hardest difficulty. I don't want to drop it. So, regardless of the result... Like, yeah, there we go. Danaher with a good grab. We did all right there when we got the clearance. We might not have got the mark, but we spoiled and crunched the pack and played on well. I do think they upped the shots at goal like that. Rather than the set shots, like the open play goals. Simpkin. Haven't seen much of you this season. Ball in to try and find Danaher... Simpkin picks it up, releases the footy, and another crunching tackle. I do feel like the AI tends to get the ball out more favorably as well. But here we go. It's a one-goal game. Zorko picks up the footy to Gunston. Goal, and the Lions are back. Super close game here for Q Clash. And can the Lions pick up their first goal and first win of the season? Straight through the big sticks. Back in midfield. Lockie wins it. Decent handball. Rayner only as far as Dunkley who bangs it to Zorko and can't get the grab. Squandering that opportunity. They try to bring it out from the back. Simpkin. A lot of pressure on forward. McCluggage couldn't get it back with the flight. The Saints. The Saints? <laughs> the Suns <laughs> go to the wing. Leicester needs to win this. Can't. Going to play it in quickly. Why? Obviously, there's going to be a lead there from the pocket. Why are you not tr tracking him? I think this is one of the Berry brothers, to be honest. He now goes around the body. Probably gets it as well. Obviously, we let... Cockatoo and McDonald. Haven't seen either of them notably. Third quarter now. Lions still trailing. The Suns 27-18 have the lead. 4-3, three goals just for the Lions. 
and Fort couldn't win the interception. They're going to go back and have a shot here. And the Suns for number five. Slot the goal. Bang. Textbook finish there by the Suns. 5-3-33 now. I do think they should add who's kicking the football. Because at least in AFL Eva, you could see who has the ball. Because although I recognize the majority of AFL footballers. Like, I don't know who number 12 for the Suns is. I can't remember that stuff. And especially with transfers coming in as well. And you sometimes when you only see the back or side of their head, I don't necessarily know who that is. Fourth quarter now. The Suns just running away with it. Sicily now comes out. Completely misses the spoil. Trying to time it perfectly. And the Suns for number seven. Slot it through the big sticks on an angle there as well. And in Q clash this time around. It's going to be a massive upset. There's no way we can come back in this one. I don't think we've got enough time. Ball in. King, can he win it? It was actually Bailey in the end. He's going to go have a set shot as Bailey kicks number five and narrows the lead slightly. So, it's really only a two-goal game. Back in midfield. Can we get one back? No, that's it. And the Suns win by an absolute measly 17 points. And we've lost every single match this episode. So hopefully we don't not make the top eight by those two points. We definitely need to bounce back. I don't think we're playing that bad football in the midfield and going forward. We're capitalizing. We're scoring nine times out of ten. It's just our defensive 50s. Um, we're either not winning the mark and we're not spoiling well enough. So my defense needs to improve significantly. Probably looking at the overall ratings, I would say our defense is probably the weakest. Our forward line is absolutely stacked and packed. Our midfield is quite strong as well. But I still need to improve, learn, and adjust to this hardest difficulty. Maybe you guys as well are learning. What do you guys reckon? What's sort of the notable changes you guys have noticed between the hard and hardest difficulties over the last um, couple of weeks? But anyway, thank you very much for watching. Like and subscribe if you haven't already. If you want to see more from me, check out the videos on screen and stay tuned for Season 2, Episode 2 of this Brisbane Line Career Series coming out tomorrow. But now I feel confident to do more seasons with this Brisbane career. Um, I think, um, well, it's my team. It's my club. I love playing as Brizzy. So I think we're going to just try and win as many premierships as we can. We'll try and keep it realistic and sensible. Um, I want to try and give a chance to draftees, but now with this difficulty that we're playing with, I don't know. Like, if we're getting pumped with Sicily not even being able to spoil or mark properly, if we give Estes pick 20 in the draft, uh, who we brought in, who's only, like, between 70 to 75 rated, how is he going to win that mark? Do you know what I mean? And also, I'm a manager that I personally prefer proven players, like proven first-team players, rather than um, the relying too much on youngsters. Probably more than what the Brisbane club philosophy philosophy would, would be, because they do tend to bring in and uh, blood youngsters quite a bit. But anyway, uh, go and check out my Richmond and Collingwood career series if you haven't already. But uh, at the moment, we're going to be sticking with this Brisbane series over the next coming days and weeks. But I am always open to doing more AFL clubs on AFL 23. So thank you very much for watching. Make sure to take care of yourselves. Have a fantastic rest of your day. My name is Ben Simpsey, and I will see you in the next one. Cheers.